Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how to make this sweet waterfall card. I've made these before. I've got a playlist. I'll pop that up now. I've got a double version, which is a bit bigger and you can put photos. It's more of an album. I've got one where I've done fast food. There's like burgers and hot dogs and things on it. And then I think there's one which is more of a landscape and it's square. It's a bit smaller. So you can have a look at different kind of um, themes and things. This one is using the cute kittens. The cute kittens is still available. I'm going to do today's YouTube one using my Perky Pooches stamp set. Unfortunately, that one was still waiting to come back in, but the kittens for this one is available. It's very sweet. So if you've not seen a waterfall card, you just pull the little tab here and then it will reveal each panel with a different image on the front. And then also you have this panel where you can have a hidden message. So this one says happy birthday on it. And then on the top there, it says, I'm not kitten, it's your birthday. <laughs> and then inside, I've got hope you have a perfect day. And I've done some little footprints there. So that is all using the cute kittens. So this one, like I said, this is available. So you'll be able to create this style here. But I'm going to show you the next one using the perky pooches. So this is the perky pooches stamp set. So I know lots of you will already have this. And I've got the dies and everything on the back there. I did do some masking. If you want to see how to create this kind of effect, then check out the Facebook Live where I made the one with the kittens. And I'll link that in the description box below. For the cloud stencil, I just pulled one of my cloud dies out there and I made my own stencil and I just moved that around on the cardstock to create my sky, which is that way because I've got them in all different orientations. For the birds, I pulled out the birds from the Fabulous Flight stamp set and then the pull I've just taken from my Christmas one there with the snowman and the elf. So this is a 5x7 card. So I've got my 5x7 card blank. If you haven't got pre-made cards, you'll want a piece of 10 10 by 7 and along the 10 inch side you're going to score at 5 inches. Fold that in half and you'll have your card blank. This white piece here is 4 and 3 quarters by 6 and 3 quarters and you'll want that again 4 and 3 quarters by 6 and 3 quarters for the front. Now this here I have embossed with this lovely Creative Expressions Bubble Birth. Now this is old, it was sold out not long after I um, got it. I used it on the opal polish video that I done a while ago now but any kind of embossing folder will look nice but if I can find any I'll link that one below. So if you want to get all those ready I inked it up as well on one side and then ran that through my machine so I've got that green background. So I'm just going to stick that one down. Okay so that's my card blank already. We've then got these pieces here so I've already gone ahead and started to decorate this one. So this is a piece of 11 by 2 cardstock and along the 11 inch side you want to score at 6, 6 and a half, 7, 7 and a half, 8 and 8 and a half. Okay, what's going to happen is you're going to fold the 6 inch over like so, so you've got this plain piece on the back and then just fold and burnish all of those other score lines. I've already done that. On this piece facing you, you want to decorate because that is the pull tab that you will pull down and it will reveal this piece here. So like I said, you can have a hidden message there if you want. Now I'm going to probably trim this, but you can keep it this length, but you might not want to go so far down with your image. So where this gap is, keep it plain and you can write or stamp or have an arrow telling the person what to do with the, this piece. So in my case, I had pull there, but you might want to write something else. You also want this little piece which will hold everything together on the card and this is one by two and three quarters. Now I'm putting this one together slightly differently because usually this piece I have wider than these pieces here. So you actually see them like the hamburger one and I put some like decorative gems or something on them. But this time I'm completely hiding it so the whole thing looks like, you know, you, you actually kind of really do kind of think like how is that stuck on there because obviously this is pulling through like I said usually the tabs exposed on the side so just a little bit different there I think it gives it actually a nicer finish when you can't see that piece so for the panels here I've got five pieces of three by three and five pieces of two and three quarters by two and three quarters and that's the white and it's the white pieces that I've stamped and decorated with my little pooch here so I've got them it's going to be I think I'm going to do that sequence okay so you want to now stamp and get these pieces ready because it's best to do these panels before you stick them in the card okay and then what you want to do is on the very first top panel here just add your liquid glue now if you want to use 
double-sided tape you can in fact do you know what i'm going to use double-sided tape today because this glue has been really irritating me today <laughs> if you'd watched the live with me you would have seen my frustration it just clogs up all the time and i've got the pin in it but i'm just going to leave it alone for the rest of the day now so i'm going to run some double-sided tape just in each section i don't i wouldn't cover each section all at once do one at a time so this is just the half inch section so i'm just using my half inch um, tape there so you can see i've got my sticky tape on there and then you want to grab your one that you're going to have right at the top the only thing with the double-sided tape is you don't have wiggle room whereas it is nice to have that you know few seconds to move it so i'm just making sure i've got an equal amount overhanging each side get the top get this first one bang on because everything's going to line up with this now when i fold it over you can see where it's attached there you're then going to run your tape on the next piece here take the backing off and then i'm going to grab the next one i'm just going to make sure you know, there's nothing sticky overhanging and then you're going to line this one up with the top of that section and with the sides of this piece like so now i probably yeah that feels a little bit tacky in there so i probably go for maybe a smaller width tape but you can also just use an anti-static powder and just run it over and that will take away all of that stickiness there like so and then i'm just going to fold over the next one and just repeat that process until you stuck all of your pieces down okay so you can see mine are all stuck down you can start to move it and you'll see how that all works this piece here is where we're now going to attach this to so you just want to stick it you can go underneath or over the top it doesn't really you know it really doesn't matter i'm going to pop it on the top i'm just going to run my glue just over you know about the same width as this you don't want to go higher because if there's any glue exposed you again you want to make sure you get rid of that and just make sure you've got an even amount overhanging make sure it's nice and flush because that just means it's nice and straight so it'd be easy to put it on the card okay so now when you turn it over you'll see these two sections here and this is now where you want to add your more liquid glue if you want or i'm going to use the red liner tapes so it's nice and strong so i'm just going to pop it in each section and now before i stick this down i may just want to trim but i will want to trim i'm just going to sit that on there and then using a one inch circle punch i've made this little pull but you see it's going to come down too far there but you may just stamp yours straight onto that piece which is why i made it that length but i'm going to now just trim off some of that image there and then let's just see what space i've got like so i'm kind of thinking with this one to actually i think i'm going to cut it flush so let's just show you another way so i'm actually going to trim this right away so i'm going to go yeah so i'm going to cut this so it is five inches so now it'll be completely just hidden behind i'm going to just cut another bit more off i just want to show you another way that it can look so you can either like i said stamp right onto it or now have it completely hidden but i'm going to pop some glue on one half of this lay the tab down and then just lay this down over the top so it's in the middle there we go so it should now stick to the back of this piece we've got a tape on those pieces there so now you can take the backing off and then grab your card make sure it's facing the right way up and then sit this on here so if you don't have a circle punch or the word pull or anything like that then just keep the white card at the length that i gave you Otherwise, if you want to do it like this, then you can have just the pull tab visible. And then just make sure 
that you really squish down. Don't worry if you, you know, squash that bit of the embossed image because you don't see it because it's all hidden underneath. Just make sure that's all in place. And now you'll be able to pull your tab and you'll see your image. And I've just remembered what I did that I forgot to do again. And this was going to be a landscape. So those of you that saw the live will be laughing now and thinking, I'm sure she said she was going to do this landscape. But I've totally forgot again because my memory is terrible right now. But anyway, you can see how it works. But if you wanted to have it landscape, you would just have your images this way. And then it would be a top folding card. And you can see I even had all this in the right orientation for it to be a landscape card. But never mind. You can see how wonderful it looks as portrait. And I'm going to curl the tab just out a little bit, just makes it easy then for whoever you give this to, to just pull that down. And you can also decorate all of these panels here as well if you want, pop photos in there. There's so many lovely ways to decorate these cards. So there you have it, two <laughs> portrait waterfall cards. Also, if you are interested to know the colours I've used for the clouds, I use the Salty Ocean Distress Oxide for this um color this coral color here it was the abandoned coral and then for the green on the embossing folder i used the mode lawn so i hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today showing you how to make these waterfall cards very very easy and you can stick this mechanism onto any size card that you want you can also pop it into mini albums it's just a really really fun kinetic piece really to pop on your paper craft projects so thank you for watching as always i'll link everything in the description box below I'll also pop up here those other waterfall cards that I've done and also look at that playlist if you do want to have some more inspiration. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.